74-5 provided a good orientation to these new C-body models with detailed information on instrument panel service and glass adjustment. But all new bodies mean new hardware and new service procedures for adjusting door fit, fenders, aligning hoods, deck lids, and tailgates. Good alignment is essential for good appearance. A properly adjusted door opens easily and closes easily. And it must seal against air and water leaks. To demonstrate how built-in adjustments are used, the doors, hood, and deck lid of this car have been deliberately misaligned. A close inspection shows that the upper corner of the rear door is low and too close to the quarter panel. Also, the lower part of the door is not flush with the front door or the quarter panel. The rear corner of the front door is high. The spacing between the rear door and the front door is not uniform. The front door is not flush with the front fender. In short, we've created an exaggerated example of door misalignment. Now let's get down to the business of correcting these conditions. After inspecting door fit and spacing, Check to make sure the door opens and closes without binding. Don't forget that a striker that is set too high or too low can force the door into misalignment as well as interfering with ease of operation. Since the quarter panel cannot be moved, adjust the rear door before you tackle the front door. Here we want to raise the rear of the door and equalize the spacing between the rear edge of the rear door and the quarter panel. Fore and aft, as well as up and down adjustment, is provided at hinge attachment to the body. Before loosening the hinge bolts, scribe the hinge location so you'll know how much you've moved the door. Loosen the upper hinge bolts so the door can be moved forward. Loosen two of the lower hinge bolts, but leave one lower hinge bolt tight. This will let you move the hinge forward by lifting the rear of the door. The tight lower hinge bolt will keep the door from dropping down out of vertical alignment. Before rechecking door alignment, remove the striker. That's the easiest way to make sure there is no interference that might throw the door out of alignment when it's closed. Once the spacing at the rear edge of the door is okay, retighten the hinge bolts. Incidentally, the specified torque for all hinge bolts is 30 foot-pounds. The next step is to move the lower part of the door inward so that it's flush with the front door and the quarter panel. In and out adjustment is made at the hinge attachment to the door. Scribe the hinge location before you loosen anything. Since you can't use door leverage to move this half of the hinge, you'll probably have to loosen these bolts a bit more so that you can push the lower part of the door inward. You may have to block the door in the partly open position. Common sense and a little experience will tell you how much to loosen bolts and where to apply leverage to move a door or hinge. Once the door alignment is okay, reinstall and adjust the striker. Be sure it's adjusted so that the door is flush or line to line with the quarter panel. The striker should be tightened to 50 foot-pounds. When properly adjusted, the door will not lift or be pulled downward as the door is closed. On hardtop models, be sure and check glass fit and seal after door alignment has been corrected. Hardtop glass adjustments are covered in your service manuals and in Tech Session 74.5. Now for the front door adjustments. Fore and aft as well as up and down adjustment is obtained at the hinge attachment to the body, the same as for rear doors. However, 
With a new in-swinging hinge design, you'll need a lot of patience or the special 9 16 offset box wrench to get at those hinge bolts. Even with the special wrench, those lower hinge bolts are a bit tricky to get at. In and out adjustment is provided by hinge attachment at the door. These bolts are easy enough to get at with a socket or box wrench. Let's correct our problem door. We want to lower the rear corner of the front door so it lines up with the rear door. The lower part of the door should go forward slightly to equalize the spacing there. Back off the three upper hinge to body bolts and two of the lower hinge bolts. About one half turn should be enough. Leave the remaining lower hinge bolt snug. It's a good idea to remove the striker because it'll have to be readjusted anyway. The lower hinge bolt will act as a pivot and keep the door from moving more than you want it to. Leaving one bolt snug prevents the entire door from dropping down and upsetting the vertical adjustment. Close the door part way and push down on the rear corner of the door. The door itself gives you a lot of leverage so the hinge can be moved with the hinge bolts quite snug. A floor jack or stand under the sill keeps the body from rocking too much and makes it easier to control hinge movement. If spacing between the fender and lower part of the door is still too wide, retighten just one of the upper hinge bolts. Two of the lower hinge bolts are already loose, so back off the remaining one. With one upper hinge bolt snug, pushing down on the rear corner will pivot the door and bring it closer to the fender at the lower front corner. Once the spacing at the front door is okay, tighten the hinge bolts to hold this adjustment. Here's something worth remembering. Leaning on a door when it's partly open can force it out of alignment. This is particularly true on one of those big, wide, two-door hardtop doors. A lift from a floor jack placed under the rear corner of the slightly open door will often correct a door sag condition without loosening any hinge bolts. Now, back to our problem. The next step is to bring the front edge of the door in so that it's flush with the rear edge of the fender. Since we have to push the door in, loosen the hinge to door bolts. You may have to back them off quite a bit because you won't have any leverage helping you move the door in. You may have to block the door in a partly open position in order to have something to push against. You can figure out where to stick a block or mallet to keep the door from closing easier than we can explain it. Here's something to look out for after you install and adjust the striker. Sometimes the end of the striker may rub on the door latch as the door is closed. This is most apt to happen after a door has been adjusted rearward. If the interference is only slight, it can usually be corrected by bumping the striker rearward. A fiber block and hammer will do the trick. If the door adjustment has been changed a lot, you may have to remove a washer from under the striker so that it won't rub on the latch. No more than three standard washers should ever be used under a striker. Once you're satisfied with the appearance and operation of the door, be sure all of the hinge bolts are properly torqued. On hardtop models, make sure the door glass fits and seals properly. Don't forget this was covered in session 74-5. Next, let's take a look at the built-in hood adjustments. The hinge to body attachment holes are oval-shaped and oversized. These holes provide side-to-side -side adjustment and a small amount of fore and aft adjustment. Shims can be used to raise the hood. The hinge to hood attachment holes are also oval-shaped and oversized. This provides fore and aft as well as a very small amount of up and down adjustment. Built-in hood adjustments are fairly obvious, but let's run through a hood fitting demonstration. In our example, the gap between the hood and grill is a bit wide. The front of the hood is too close to the fender, and the hood is high, sticks up above the fender. Screw threads adjust the rubber bumper at the front of the hood. Lower it to bring the hood flush with the fender at the front. Next, back off the hinge to hood bolts. This will let you move the hood forward to close up the gap at the grill panel and swing the hood away from the fender at the front. The loose hinge to hood bolts also let you move the rear of the hood down so that it's flush with the fender. After tightening the hinge bolts, check hood closing and fit. Next, we'll take a look at deck lid adjustments. Both fore and aft and up and down adjustment is provided by the bolts which attach the hinge to the deck lid. These built-in adjustments are quite obvious and need no explanation. The deck lid latch assembly has two elongated holes and is held in place by two bolts. This arrangement allows up and down movement of the latch. 
Elongated holes in the striker let you move it sidewise so that it lines up with a latch. Adjust the striker horizontally so that it lines up with a latch. Make sure the latch is adjusted vertically so that it puts enough squeeze on the weather strip to ensure a good seal. There is nothing very complicated about deck lid alignment. However, at the rear of station wagon models, the story is quite different. A step-by-step -step coverage of tailgate adjustments would take up a complete film, so we've put those details in the reference book. In the time remaining, we'll point out the built-in adjustment points. At the left side, loosening the combination upper hinge and striker permits fore and aft adjustment. Shims under the hinge and striker are used to obtain side-to-side -side adjustment of the upper hinge. At the lower hinge, fore and aft as well as side-to-side -side adjustment is accomplished by loosening the hinge attaching bolts. Shims are added under the hinge to move it upward. Remove shims to lower the tailgate. At the right side of the gate, the upper striker can be adjusted fore and aft or up and down by simply loosening the striker and the attaching bolts. The lower striker is adjusted by loosening the attaching bolts. Be sure the upper and lower strikers are adjusted so that they hit the centers of the latch throats. The latches should contact both strikers at the same time. Before attempting tailgate adjustment, be sure and read your reference book and service manuals. Step-by-step -step instructions are given for vertical adjustment, lateral adjustment, in and out adjustment, and information on correcting tailgate sag. Good door and sheet metal alignment is mighty important to appearance, operation, and sealing. Handling body service requires a basic knowledge of the built-in adjustment features, a little patience, and a lot of common sense.